Hi, Andrew Merchie here for Enhanced Dimensions. Uh, welcome to another tutorial on uh, stereoscopic stuff. Um, today I'm going to be covering uh, creating a stereoscopic image from a flat 2D image in Photoshop. The reason for this is although I predominantly work in video, I do actually get asked quite a lot of uh, uh, I get quite a lot of comments and questions from people either on the website at uh, www.enhanced-dimensions.com or on the YouTube or Vimeo channels asking how you actually can do stuff. So this is a question that pops up <coughs> fairly regularly is how can I create a 3D image from a um, 2D flat image that I have? using the likes of Photoshop. So I'm going to show you something here that's called displacement mapping. Effectively what it is is you take your image and you create some um, dark and light areas for a displacement map and then <coughs> the displacement map will actually um, uh, shift the pixels by a varying degree. So where it's light um, it will shift it more I think and where it's dark it'll shift it less so effectively what you're doing is you're adjusting things um, based on a grayscale image so let's start by looking at the original image here it is kind of crazy thing that we were going to uh, I was going to convert from uh, 2D to 3D as a poster uh, obviously it's comic book so it's kind of quite flat and um, the first thing to do was really create a, a duplicate of the file so I could start working with it and what I'm going to show you here is some of the some of the various layers obviously it was quite time consuming to actually uh, create the the various cutouts so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually nip through it quite quickly if you can see down the right hand side of the screen here you'll see that I've created uh, lots of layers now each of those layers is a different percentage of black so on 90% which is one of the furthest areas I've actually cut out the buildings now this can be quite messy at points because as you can see around here is actually going to be covered by stuff in the foreground um, just so you know behind that in the very background I do have a solid layer but I'll leave that off for the time being <coughs> so <coughs> for the very back I've selected 90% and I've actually cut out this area um, in this case I wasn't uh, incredibly wasn't being incredibly accurate about it because um, it was in the background so I wasn't too worried it was done fairly fairly loosely um, next at 80% layer I started doing the smoke plumes as you can see I've done them a little bit more accurately um, I think once you see all the layers over each other you'll see how I, you can be kind of a bit messy because again if you look up here in this area you're going to have things in front of them so it doesn't matter if they've got this kind of messy blobbiness as long as your outlines around here are actually good so in the next layer i had done one of the airships on the layer above that i had done a airship so as you can see i'm doing a 70 percent black then a 60 percent black then going to a 55 percent now 55 percent Let's switch off some of the stuff in the background. 55%, I've got that little area there with the man. And you can see one of the uh, robot's legs in the background. <coughs> so effectively, you just go through the layers that you want to create. And you do them lighter and 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 lighter. And, lighter and, lighter and uh, eventually, you have built up an image <coughs> that looks like that. In some cases you'll see I've actually cheated a little bit. I say cheated, I'm just trying to get a bit more depth out of it. So I might use a slight vignette um, where it's slightly darker to slightly lighter. And um, I'm not actually sure if many of these do. Or you can see on these laser blasts I've definitely gone from maybe a 10 or 15 or 20 percent up to a zero. So this will actually make them bump out as they come forward so that's one little extra technique you can use but as you can see what I've done is by jumping back to this original image I've just created lots of layers outlining various things and making them lighter and lighter as I wish to um, to bring them higher and higher up in the image so that are, that's effectively the bump map as it's known now I'm going to show you how you actually do that this image at the moment is a grayscale image so I'm going to uh, convert it mode wise to RGB and once we've converted it to RGB 
you can see we've now got our channels. If you've watched any of my other tutorials, you'll have the, the basics of converting, uh, of working with the separate red, green, and blue channels <coughs> to, <coughs> to create the depth. The stuff here we're creating is an anaglyph version, although there is, uh, you could uh, very simply um, create a left and right eye view of this as well by simply using all the channels. However, what I'm going to do here is fairly simple stuff. So I'm going to select the red channel. So as you can see, I've only got the red channel selected. I'm going to switch the rest of them back on so we can actually see them as we're working. Now, if you want to pop your glasses or get your glasses, your 3D glasses ready, <coughs> we can do this now. So on the red channel there, you go into your um, filter and you're going to go distort, displace. Now this displacement mapping, what will happen is this now looks for a file which is of course the image I've just previously shown you and it's going to use that to actually distort this image by a specific part. So I've already set up the horizontal scale to be something like minus 40. Um, now that will move the images left and right which is what we want for the um, separation. We don't want any vertical scale because we don't want to move them up and down the way that would actually just mess the image up and cause headaches and all sorts of nastiness. And I've left this as stretch to fit, although it's identical size, so it won't be any different. And I've left uh, repeat edge pixels on when it's undefined. <coughs> so all I do now is go OK, and then I select the um, bitmap file that I have. <coughs> and it's a little bit of processing, as this is a fairly large image. It was for a poster. You'll now have a little think about it. And if you pop your glasses on, you can now see that the image has jumped from being a flat 2D image um, to uh, an image that's got lots and lots of layers. It's not perfect, there was further work done on this, but it gives you an idea <coughs> of the kind of thing you can do. So let me flick between the two. There's your 2D image with your red channel obviously just um, unadjusted, and there it is with the, uh, the red channel distorted. So let me quickly just go through those steps one more time. From the beginning, you have your start with your original image, then you make layers, dark layers in the background, light layers in the foreground, and then you save that file as your bump map file. Then in your original image, you go to your red channel, you go to Filter, Distort, Displace, using a horizontal scale of something like minus 40 or perhaps less if you don't want that, vertical scale of 0, you go OK, select your bump map file and that will then create the 3D image. So there you go, <clears throat> that was a quick tutorial on how to convert a 2D image to a 3D image. Uh, using Photoshop and uh, displacement map. <coughs> I hope that's been useful for you. And um, if you've enjoyed that, um, please do come and um, visit us at enhancedimensions.com um, where you'll find a whole load of tutorials and lots of stereoscopic goodies for you to download. Um, there's a free glasses offer um, and just a whole lot of stereoscopic news and views and exciting stuff. So thank you for watching this. Uh, this is Andrew Murchie for Enhanced Dimensions. Uh, hope to see you again. Bye now. Bye.